Welcome to Date with Danu, right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Today's show is a very special show. We're celebrating the life of the phenomenal Shelton Garmini Fonseca. He goes down in history as one of the most influential people in Sri Lankan cinema and also someone who upgraded the way cinema is seen in our life. And to talk about him and his great uh, memories that he has left back, we are going to be speaking to uh, two of my very favorite people in the industry, the ever so beautiful Sangeeta and the charming Chan. Hi, I'm Chandran Ratnam. I'm a filmmaker, and I'm happy to hear, be here with Danu. This is my second time with Danu, and I'm looking forward to having a good time. Danu's date with Danu is not just uh, a good time; it's a lot of fun. I like it. I enjoy it as much as he does, and I think the audience enjoys it even more. Looking forward to it. A date with Danu. Well, Danu, Danu is outrageous, <laughs> to say the least. He's full of fun and a uh, lot of ideas and uh, he, he uh, is spontaneous. I think that's a remarkable thing, to be confident with your spontaneity. So I find uh, it, it's very encouraging and, I, and stimulating. I enjoy it very much and uh, Danu is a favorite of mine. And uh, we look forward to always working with Danu. Sangeeta Viraratna and um, what you see is what you get. Uh, it's all me, um, pretty much honest and but a little diplomatic at times. Uh, easy to get hurt but never really worry too much about it. Let go of many things and I love life and I've loved the life I've lived and I live the life I love so it's a good it's good to be me, I think. Date with Dano. It's always such an interesting chat. Um, my third visit. Yeah, why would I come if I don't like it? <laughs> Dano. Um, <laughs> the biggest diva I know, yeah, wow, um, has his moments, definitely, um, how, I want to be nice Dano, really, <laughs> so I'm going to say um, a wonderful human being above everything else, but um, you know, a little trashy at times and a little outspoken at times. But um, that's, I think, a part of the act, not really you. So it was in the year 2004, we lost a legend. And uh, although his life on earth was in his 60s, in the years, in, in his 60 odd years on earth, he made such an impression to a point that we still speak about him and he's still seen as such a um, such a veteran in what he did. Let's start off and welcome you for the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you <laughs> for having us. Uh, so, I know Chandran, you are such a dear friend to him. Even before he became the world-renowned Garmini Fonseca, you all have been mates. Let's think certainly, about that. Certainly, certainly, yes. I met, I met Garmini uh, long before he became an actor. Mm. Uh, Bridge on the River Kwai was to be filmed in Sri Lanka. And uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, crew members stayed in my, my father's house, mm. or my annex. So we rented it to him. 
and I got friendly with him and I said I'd, I'd like to you know work on the movie mm. and he hired me as a day laborer type of thing mm. and we went on to Kitul Gala. Mm. So I was one of the first to be hired. Right. When I went there they told me that uh, four experienced film technicians are going to join us. And uh, these four guys were brought up, brought, brought to Kitul Gala in a, in, a, in a van and introduced to me. I was one of the labor. I was mm. in the, on the uh, bottom of the totem pole. Right. And it was Garmini Fonseca and uh, Sesha Palyakara, Vijay Abhideva and uh, 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 one other, one other. I can't mm. remember the name. So uh, here we were and uh, they were getting 400 rupees a week and I was getting 100 rupees a week. <laughs> because I was, I was just hired. Yeah. Now these are veterans of the film. Yeah. I wondered how did they become veterans of the film. We don't even have an industry. Mm. And then I found out that four of them worked on Ray Carver. So right. now they are veterans. Veterans. Right. <laughs> so they get 400 a week, I get 100 Yeah, you're 300 short. <laughs> yeah. And they got, they got accommodation. Mm. Uh, they had chalets. They had, four of them had accommodations. And uh, there was a bar. Mm. And uh, there was a, a cuisine from France and, and, and England. Wow. So all of that was given to these, these four people were included in the in the, in in the, the Western, Western oh, right. English team, okay? I was not. So I was sleeping. I found a little hut, uh, a place there. I slept on a mat in somebody's house there and I paid 10 rupees for a night and mm. then that. So I used to come to work every day, but I was a good worker. So mm. people took notice of me. And uh, uh, Garmini found out that I was a Thomian and he was a Thomian. Mm. So we kind of looked at each other and he said, why don't you come and have a drink with me? Mm. So I came up, came up to this uh, this big uh, uh, fancy place up on the hill, Raj, Mr. Rajakarna's uh, bungalow at mm. that time, and that's where the British crew and the, and the, and these four mm. veterans, <laughs> <laughs> veterans, they lived, they lived. They lived. So There's been a bit there. of personal yeah. scar there. Yeah. It's like yeah. I slept on a mat. <laughs> yes, no, I did. I did. British sleep on a mat. So then I came, I came over there, and we had a few drinks, and then uh, uh, I had a lot, I, I had money. Mm. My father was. I came from a wealthy family, so I always had my pocket was yeah. full. So we used to buy drinks at the bar first time. Second time I went there, I started buying around after a few drinks, I got hot. Uh -huh. And I was <laughs> buying drinks for everybody, wondering who the hell is this guy? <laughs> so one day, the interesting story, because now Garmini and I became friendly and friendly. Uh. We can't eat there because they can't bill anybody. Right. Only those guys are given food. Okay. Now an outsider coming is a production problem. Right. right. So uh, one day, Gami and I had a little too much to drink. Mm. And uh, he said, Chandran, don't go down the hill, you'll fall. So why don't you come and sleep in my room, Shelley? So I said, okay. Uh -huh. And then I, I stayed with him. The next morning, there was a security problem. They had found out that I, an outsider, had come and stayed in the, in, in in the veterans' room. In the veterans' yeah. room. Yeah. So a uh, big inquiry. And then Gami said, hey, wait a minute. This guy is working. You guys like his work. He's one of us, and uh, you have to you have to rearrange this this whole scenario and yeah. give him a room. So it was Garmini who got me a room and got me four hundred rupees a week. Wow! So that's how I met Garmini Fonseca, and we've been friends ever since. Wow! So this dates back to what year? Huh, we don't want to talk about years, do we? <laughs> yeah, nineteen fifty-six. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. But uh, I have always been told that Garmin was someone who spoke directly. He Absolutely. never hidden any, he never hides anything. He just says what he has to say. And uh, I have always been told his presence and his personality was majestic. Yes. Yeah. When he walks in, people have to look at him. It just yes. happens yes. organically. Yes. He had that stature <coughs> about him. So let's go to you. Now, you were a little girl acting in films. And you did a film where he was acting with you first. Yes, actually that's my first film. Okay. Uh, so, very, it's a matter of time. It was an English movie. Um, I mean, the language was in English. So, um, Uncle Roy was the director and then Mr. Fonseca was in the movie, but he actually didn't have a scene with me. Mm. But for filming, he came on the location and you know the moment he walked in and uh, he was the deputy speaker at that time mm. and you know uh, with him would come his entourage and then uh, you know I w you're starstruck from that moment mm. and um, anyway he, I was a fan of his uh, then 
you know, I was like going behind Roy Uncle and then, you know, I was just watching him acting and then Roy Uncle said, you know what, I'm going to write a scene for you because mm. he could see, see that. See the fact <laughs> that you were like, you were having a <laughs> star <laughs> moment my there. moment <laughs> there. <coughs> and Roy Uncle wrote a scene for me actually mm. with Mr. Fonseca and then that scene where I was crying and, you know, complaining and then Mr. Fonseca would advise me. Because you were, according to the movie, you were in love with his son. Son. And, and that you were you know, crying to the father-in-law yes. already. <laughs> 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 and then um, in that scene, so uh, he was like seated next to me and you could feel him, you know, in, even just to sit next to him would be such a big deal. You know, basically his aura just had such a majestic presence. And um, then he, w he was telling me, you know what, try not to use the glycerin that they're giving, just cry. <laughs> I'm like, uh, how does one do that? <laughs> 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 you know, just cry. <laughs> uh, no, just think of the situation and, you know. And I was like, you know, he, it's Mr. Fonseca next to you, you're not going to be crying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, I tried desperately, but I just couldn't <laughs> do it, okay. <laughs> Uh, but then they gave me the glycerin and then the acting part of it came and then I did my lines and I think he was impressed with that because mm. next thing I know I'm casted in his movie mm. um, as again as uh, no this time as Damit's uh, girlfriend wife later what about the boy? He was such a brave man. What about his grandfather who was even braver than that? You want to disgrace the memory of both of them? Is that what you want? Is that? My dad would have a father of the Magan. Well, well, I'll cut out a wagon with Ray. Oh, itu ada duk kerja drama sahaja ni dalam kau mungkin lu kau cek tiada tuan minyak suin. Um, namun khatot tanda galak yang ni. Khatot yang ni orang itu kekanan ni cara minyak. What a movie that was. No mina minyak suin. Yeah, that was indeed. That was like it went all the way to Jaffna. I, I have means we have heard about it. Okay. We're going to speak more. We are celebrating the life of the great Garmini Fonseca on the show as a special edition because his uh, death anniversary falls on the 30th of September. So this show is dedicated for that. We'll speak more when we do come back after this. Welcome back to the show. It's Date with Danu, a very special edition. We're talking about uh, the... the <laughs> What can I say? The great stories that Garmin Fonseca has left us with. Uh, so let's go to his... Um, how is he on set? Like how is he when he directs someone? I recall my experience. Um, I remember one of the first things, the second day of shooting, um, I had a scene with him and we were, it was a scene of a breakfast table. Now according to the scene I'm angry because he sent my boyfriend to the uh, war yeah. and I'm pregnant um, and my boyfriend has died and now I'm married to this man to save the image of the army. So I'm like really angry with him because you know it's all his fault yeah. to start off with. So he uh, told me this the whole story and he told me you have to you know you're not ha you're not a happy mother to be. You're angry you're you know you have a spark of anger that is constantly directed towards this man. So he told me all that, came on set, kept me there and then you know people fall at his feet okay, on set also. So um, I'm see seated like that and then he started talking to people and then you know everybody stops their work and come and talk to him and whatever he says it's answered and he's making jokes and like I'm seated here and I'm like thinking what? what? Yeah. I need to You're in character, you I'm have been character, grieved. Yeah. I need to do this. You're angry pregnant woman. And yes, <laughs> and he's making fun and, <laughs> and these guys are coming, falling at his feet yeah. and saying all these things. And I'm getting more angry and he's getting, everyone's getting involved. Mm. The cameraman stops his work, comes and talks to him. You know, the entire crew pays to, uh, attention to him. I was like, okay, forget it. Forget it. I'm just going to concentrate on my thing. And I just kept on at thinking of whatever he said. And end of that shoot, end of that day, that was second day for me, 
Um, there was a th party he threw in the hotel. And when we went in for the party, uh, he congratulated my mom. Mm. He said, you know what? I found uh, a girl a s who is not only uh, beautiful, but dedicated to her work. Congratulations on a great journey ahead. And my mom was like, a little, he said, no, generally when I say something on set, everybody falls. But this girl, when I told her to do something, she concentrated on her work. And he, in here, he just did the whole thing to, make just to, to see whether I would fall off <laughs> or go. That was your tuition class for the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was really yeah, amazing thing for me. Mm. And uh, that was something that stayed with me. And it helped me to really understand that I need to focus, no matter what happens on set, I need to focus on my work. Mm. And then it came to lots of scenes where he, I mean, now there's continuity in, mm. in scenes. And I don't know to keep continuity. And it was my second movie, first Sinhala movie of filming. And so uh, there is a scene of me crying and, you know, ha hitting him because he's just brought the news that my boyfriend died. That scene continued two weeks later. Uh, there I run into the room and I try to take poison. Yeah. So that's two weeks later. Yeah, now you've forgotten that you have cried. I well. have cried, how much I've <laughs> cried, all that. You know, how do I continue? You know what he did? Everything was set, was ready. He spoke, he speaks to you emotionally. He sat and he told me, okay, this, this, this. He recalled the entire memory. And then, you know how, it, how little glycerin you need to put in your eye mm. to, for you to tear? So he asked Ibar uncle to bring the glycerin bottle. He opened my eyes like that and he just pumped glycerin into my eye. I couldn't even open my <laughs> eyes. I mean, it was like pumped glycerin and it was burning. And I started tearing and crying. And I cried so much that I was exhausted. <laughs> and it was exact continuity because I couldn't, as an actress, bring it on my own. So but he helped he you to cry for the yeah. peak of making me go back to that whole two weeks ago. Yeah, it was it was technical. Yeah, you know the expression, everything. He what he wanted. I was a fresh actress. So, but then now when I look back, I understand what he did at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Just like why did you pump my eyes with this? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, but uh, Chandra, when you met him, did you ever think that he's going to leave such a big impression? No, no. Yeah, I. Uh, so after that, I went to America, mm. and I forgot a lot about what was happening in Sri Lanka. I did right. not know. And then one day I came on a holiday, and I was seated at the Golf Ace Hotel, and I saw a commotion. Mm. These are a few years later, some right. years later, and I looked, and uh, in the middle of the commotion, I saw Gamini. Mm. So I looked at that, looked at him, and said, "Hey!" And he had an award in his hand. Uh. So apparently that was some award show or something. Uh. And he, so he saw me, he stopped everything, came right to my table in the in veranda of the Golf Ace Hotel mm. and spent that whole afternoon with me. Right. That's when I said, I said, what the hell are you doing here? Uh. He said, I'm an actor. <laughs> and I said, and you wanted the award? He said, yes. Uh. That's when I realized that he was an actor. Mm. So I didn't know before that. <laughs> All right, let's get into a break. We're going to come back and speak a little bit about a story that Chandran has. Um, it has something to do with Rajini Khan. We'll speak more when we do come. A special edition to date with Danu. Now we want to speak about everyone knows Rajini Khan. He's hitting nearly 70 soon, uh, but he's still one of the biggest paid actresses of South India and blockbuster movies are guaranteed. But he uh, made a very simple, humble request and he only wanted to meet one person when he was in Sri Lanka. And you know the story. Yeah, that's right. Um, they were making a movie called Tea. Mm. And it was being Thee shot. Means fire. Tea means fire. Tea, yeah. And they were shooting in my uncle's house. Mm. I got them the location in Barnes right. Place because it had a beautiful staircase. Mm. And my uncle Donald were at Donald's studio at that time. Right. And uh, uh, my, my cousins were not that uh, impressed by having these people come with cables and cameras and mm. messing up the place. So I was kind of vigilant about the whole thing. And I had never heard of Rajini Khan. Mm. So uh, they were shooting that scene where he's going to walk 
from the top of the stairs down the circular stairs. So my, my, my uncle and family are seated uh, upstairs, not concerned about this at all, not impressed, having their lunch. Mm. And I'm there watching, watching what the hell is going on to be sure everything's going to be all right. So Rajinikanth starts from the top of the stairs and mm. he's smoking a cigarette. And he takes a deep breath and he puts it down and he steps on it. Mm. Whoa. So my, my cousins <laughs> and my uncle, and I, uh, uh, they're all looking at me. <laughs> Cut. Second time he did it. Now uh -oh. that was getting bad. They yeah. don't care about Rajini Khan. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> care about the <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so true story. Yeah? Uh. So uh, I had to do something. Mm. So I walked from the dining table towards Rajini Khan at the head of the stairs. Wow. The production, Indian production people all swarmed in because you. to them, they, this is Rajini Khan. Yeah. To me, I don't know him. Yeah. I only know like that he's stop he <laughs> making he a mark. Yeah, sh sh shouldn't step on step on the cigarette uh -huh. on you know cigarette. But so I went up to him and I said, "Excuse me, but uh, don't do that. Don't rub it in like that." You know. Uh -huh. And then the, then the whole team came up and said, "What what sir? What sir? What sir?" I said, "No. I said that cigarette thing won't work." Oh, okay, so okay, they had to pacify Rajini Khan and pacify me location also as well. Yeah, because we are the location. So now I thought my my uh, relationship with this guy, mm. actor, uh, is of no consequence and it's, it's, uh, it's nothing. Mm. Just before the rap, he comes over to me, Rajini Khan, and says, uh, introduces himself and says, Mr. Ratnam, can you do me a favor? I said, what? I heard that you know Gamini Fonseca. Mm. Can you take me to him? I said, of course. And then that evening, I went to his hotel, picked him up, and I went, I, I drove him to Jail. Mm. And uh, I told Gamini, I'm coming. And then Gamini came to the, came to the gate, and I went with Rajini Khan and another famous actress, I don't know her name, Indian actress. Mm. Boy, as soon as Gamini came, they both fell to the floor. I wish I had a camera. Mm. Rajini Khan bowing down like this mm. to our Gamini. Amazing. Wow. So we spent about uh, 45 minutes to an hour talking and I took Rajini Khan back to his hotel and he thanked me profusely. He said that's the best moment of my trip to Sri Lanka. But back in the days, I think wow. our cinema was shared so well internationally as well. It could be actors, it could be the talent, it could be the uh, crew that worked. They all, we used to cross promote them in terms of films in India and in, in Sri Lanka. <coughs> Even actresses, actors and actresses were shared but uh, that was in my opinion the best times of cinema in our country i think yeah. people waited for a film to be released people fell in love with those songs up to now we listen to music that had come during that time and we have just they have remained as anthems his what was his take on this ever so changing cinema world when it was 2004 how did he see it have you had a chat um, with him about it? Actually, you know, when I came into the industry and little, two, about two, three years into the industry, what he told me was, Sangeeta, if you want a future in acting, leave the country. And he told me, go to London. He told me, like, where to go, what to do, everything. But, but that time I had about 10 or 12 Movies. films in hand and, the, you know, and he was saying, no, just forget all this, go. Because what you invest now in another country will be better for your future because I don't see much. In terms of his uh, acting, you were directing films. You could never sign him up at that time? Well, I, I, you know, I never made a film with him. But we discussed. Uh, he did one foreign film with me mm. called Crystal, Crystal, uh, I forget, Crystal Stakes or something. It mm. was a French film. Right. He had a small part in that and he did very well. And while he was on location in Bentota, I was, I just visited him. Mm. And then we discussed the making of Father Matthew. Mm. And I told him the scenes and he gave me ideas and we discussed it. But then uh, we never made the film. So I mean, when I made the film, it was 20 years later. Mm. So it was, it was uh, sidetracked. But I, I, I regret that I was not able to do a film with him. But my friendship was much greater than films, actually. Very personal and, uh, you know, he didn't suffer. He suffered no fools, you know. Mm. He was a very direct man and yeah. uh, fearless. And what is right is right. 
and that and is a remarkable thing for me because I don't see, apart from forget the film industry, I don't see that in 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 in, uh, in the people around, you know. Mm. So he was somebody uh, who uh, unique worked unique. on time. Huh? He was somebody who worked on time. Oh yes, everything like that. Everything was. Um, I remember at that time um, we were having dinner that day, and his um, caretaker was telling us that um, uh, ex. I just say ex minister came to his house, mm. but the minister had come half an hour late. And Mr. Fonseca said, Don't open the gates. He can go back because he told me 4 o'clock. Now it's 4 30. I'm not willing to meet him now. The minister had been at the gate, called, said no. I have Actually, a story. Rescheduled, for that. Yeah, you're rescheduled right. your meeting yeah. and come and meet me again. <laughs> I'll give you, a, give you a quick story. Yeah. I just thought of it. Uh, you see, when you go to Gamri's house in Jail, you can't leave. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he is, and you sit on the floor. Yes. And I, I never drink whiskey in my life. Mm. But in his house, I drink, the only place I've ever drink, drunk whiskey was in his house. Mm. Whenever I, I mean, no, we have, we have whiskey, right? And yes, sir, you know. And uh, uh, we would sit around. And I had come from America, and he got a call from uh, D. B. Vijay Tunga, mm. president of Sri Lanka, that he wants him to come right now. It was, it was. Mm. Nisanayaka called and said. Uh, you're wanted by Mr. Vijay Tunga, he, uh, please come. I'm seated there. You know what he said? I am seated here with a friend of mine. And he's come all the way from America. And I'm having dinner with him. I'm sorry I will not be able to make it. You know, something that we were talking about, even trying to bring a gathering of people here. Uh, and we had a few people who had to last minute cancel. And uh, for me, I, I have always believed in something. If I make a promise, you have to live up to it, whatever happens. Unless you are dead and cremated, there's <laughs> no other reason. <laughs> you make it <laughs> because it's the promise, it's the word. That's what you live by. And I think that's one of the most important qualities. And um, he's someone who kept to it. And also when he wants something, if he spots the talent, he wants it. And he will make you understand why you need to do what he has asked you to do because he has a bigger vision plan than what you may think. And you know, he was also somebody, I mean, there were times when you go through your ups and downs in the industry and I had my ups and downs in the industry. And when I was going through one of those very bad patches, Mr. Fonseca was one person who would call me every day at six o'clock in the morning. Mm. Just to find, I was working on another movie, but I was mentally down because of what was happening, you know. He called me every single day at 6 in the morning and you know, how are you, da da, Talk, uh, spoke to me for about 15 minutes, right, he would make a joke uh, and then, and always tell me, you know what, just move on, get on, this is not something that's, you know, the world has not come to an end, right, just move on, get on and within, I mean, you know, when someone like him calls you and you know, tells you these things. Within about a week, I mean, I got over everything and I thought, yeah, what the hell, I mean, you know, if Mr. Fonseca can tell me, move on. He doesn't see what I did was wrong and, you know, what what happened was happened and that's it. I thought, okay, that's it, <laughs> you know. Uh, let me get on with my life and my work. Mm. Uh, so, it's like that. He, I know he would encourage, I mean, for him, who am I? I mean, you know, it's just, into the industry, I'm a newcomer, but he would be there for you. Um, there was a time when uh, uh, the late great Gamini decided to leave Sri Lanka. There was a conversation that happened with somebody who speak more than we do come back. Welcome back to the show. Gamini Fonseca won his first Best Actor award in 1963 for a film that he acted with uh, uh, Dr. Lester James Pires. Uh, but winning titles and awards was just a normal thing for him, I think. Uh, what is it in what is it that that Gamini Fonseca had that anyone who acted with him or co-starred with him was immediately elevated to a respectable place. Lots of heroines and lots of co-stars wanted to be spotted by him because if you're spotted by him, you're sorted. Yes. It was the same with yeah. Vijay Kumar Like, if they, like, see you, that means 
you have been you have been brought into the cinematic world in a different level even your seating at an event will be pushed all the way to the front row what was it in him that sort of made that well i think the association alone is is worthwhile you know you, you sometimes if you are in a david lean film you are somebody so i think it was that i think it's by association and uh, if he picks somebody to be in a movie with him well that's a qualification isn't it mm. so i think that that association was very important just like with vijay kumar who was had that uh, if yeah, somebody acted with vijay yeah he was up there but anybody who acted with gamini got uh, elevated to a certain position yes yeah. and i think uh, with mr fonseca very specially uh, because of the manner he he was not as friendly as vijay uncle he had his he had a standard that he maintained all along mm. i mean you know um so to be with mr fonseca was much more prestigious right because that that's that a that's a very hard door to open yes yeah. okay yeah. yeah. cuz he was not the he was not into you know trying to be popular or and not know. into like small talk yes. not to like chitter yeah. chatter so yeah. Yeah. and if you actually get his attention mr gamini fonseca then you have nailed the coffin yes i mean that yes So I think it was Mr. Fonseca, more or less, the only person that I know who actually had that. Mm. If you are seen by him, associated, or even you know, if he picks you, then he's picked you. He, you you are somebody. Mm. You yeah. have been enlightened yes. by his presence. Let's talk about his voice. There's something about his voice. I was told that when he speaks, he had that. Yeah. You know, that command he's per, you know he's you know he's i must tell you this his personality is really unique mm. there is no actor in sri lanka that has that charisma and carries himself in a way he may have been shorter than most of these tall actors but he towered over them in in his presence yes and only because he was when you, you you can't mess with this guy you can't mess with him he's very direct is to the point even when he was a, a politician in the um, uh, deputy speaker he, uh, i mean if you watch those those sessions he was extremely direct with everybody you know and uh, you know uh, i got associated with him even further when we were both uh, planning to open a, a studio a film studio mm. in digena still trying to do it but it was his dream and mine so we meet we share things together mm. you know we share and similar things. passions yeah similar passions mm. and then of course uh, i don't know whether i want you want to get into the Uh, area where he get came to Los Angeles. Yeah, that's what I wanted to speak about. Mm. So there was a little time when he came there and spent time with you. Yes. He came to uh, came to, to came to Los Angeles mm. and uh, the people from Los Angeles, the Sri Lankans feted him and uh, gave him a, in the on the Queen Mary. Uh. We had a big banquet right. and he was presented with an award and uh, it was a tremendous evening, a wonderful mm. evening. Of course he stayed in my house. Right. And he was with in my house for about 2 or 3 weeks. Mm. And he got to know my family and uh he had, we had a wonderful wonderful time. And one and day And we have a photograph of that as well. Yeah, yeah, you have a photograph. One day uh uh my wife was there, my American wife, and one day we were seated on by the pool and he said to me, "Chandran, I am coming back here. I want to spend the rest of my life here." He said I said where in Los Angeles no no not in Los Angeles here so I was living outside Los Angeles which was a right. beautiful salubrious uh, area mm. he said no my 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 dream is to come back and when he came back to back to Sri Lanka he still carried that idea because mm. we discussed it many times and unfortunately I was in India uh, when he when he passed away he had called me three times and uh, I was not here and when I came back I found that he had passed away So we that la the last part of his life I was very much involved in, with the philosophy of what he wanted to do right in the future so that was very touching to me because mm. because uh, we were going to we were, we had plan we had big plans in LA you know and he loved he loved the place yeah i think if he had if he has set foot there i'm sure we would have had more like sri lankan actors and all getting into some kind of film there yeah, yeah, at least sure. an art film or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, i think Yeah, because I've heard so much about his voice. They said that when he speaks, there's always a murmur that people were like, "That's coming," <laughs> because that's that was like that command, like, "Oh no!" no. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we were too young to have to ever even 
witnessed his presence, but it was in 2004. I was acting in a play and we heard the news that he has passed on. And like it was, although we have never had the chance and we were so young at that time, but yet we all felt like someone who should be treasured in our country and on earth has left our presence. And we all felt it and we were like just, I, I would have been, I would have been 17. Uh, it was quite sad at that time. But we'll speak more. There are always more memories to speak about when we do come back out. <music> celebrating Gamini Fonseca's 16th year uh, death anniversary. We are celebrating his life because Although he left us, he has left us with such great memories and a lot, lot of people have that opportunity yeah. to leave a presence for good. Like, he's, 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 he's iconic. Absolutely. He'll stay forever. Uh, that's amazing, Chandran, that your friendship was so accidental but became such a yes. great friendship that, uh, that has fond memories. And I've always liked the way how Chandran tells stories. I can just sit and listen. I think that's the <laughs> key when it comes to a director. You have to sell yeah. a story and you know how to say it and I it's always <laughs> it's always good when you sit and tell stories because for us it's a chance for us to live those days through your eyes um, let's speak about some of his great films that he has worked on and he has worked with everyone he has broken barriers of language he has broken barriers of uh, levels of society he has broken barriers of everything he has had treated everyone equally spoke to everyone in the same way and that has been something that like I had to speak to people who are in the industry in different ways it could be through camera it could be through assisting and they all said that and that is important. I think that's something that, you know, those are things that will always stay with them. You know, the fact that wherever they are, they're like, uh, that's something that's so great to even yeah. actually say that. Yeah. So tell me about uh, the film that you have enjoyed of his. No, I, 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 uh, as you know, I've not worked with him, but I enjoyed his film, Didani, very much. <laughs> He's actually one of the classics of all time, I think, because his performance was extraordinary. And uh, I would say that it is Lester's best film. Mm. And, uh, and uh, also I might add that uh, they collaborated on that film to develop that character. And it was, uh, anybody who sees it will say that. Even on international, by international standards, it stands out very much. So I would say that was his classic, in my opinion. I True. think I mean, uh, I'm, I mean, I watched many of his movies and lots of films I like. Um, so, I mean, other than the commercial, you mm. know, running around trees and all of that. Uh, so, th th that needs to be talked about too. Of course, yes, because, that's that's <laughs> because yeah. he yeah. created, you know, such a uh, beautiful image there. Um, but then, uh, like you said, Nidane, Parasatuma, Sarongale, uh, Yugante, Kali Yuge, uh, Kotiwali Ge, uh, Nomina Minisun, these are all movies that I've watched and I've really enjoyed. So also, uh, Chandia, you know, mm. uh, the ones Hathara that are more commercial video. stream, yeah. Yes, and you know, that image he brought in with his songs and the dancing and the fighting, you know, the, it was, you really feel it's a hero out there, mm. and that's an image he gave you. Um, and But his classics, I mean, for instance, Sar uh, Parasatuma. Uh, was he was directed when he was such a young age as you know 27 or 29 27 or 29 uh, but that movie when you watch it you see a lot of you maturity you would see the maturity he brings into the uh, movie you know even the shots his angles i've had uh, makeup artists and cameramen tell me sometimes um which movie was that uh, was it koti Balgate that you know when because he wears the police cap mm. There has to be a line here, and how he would tell the makeup artist, you know, there needs to be a different shade this bit and a different shade for the rest of my face, because the cap always covers this part of my face. 
and the makeup artist, there were things that the makeup artist would not see, but Mr. But Fonseca would see. would see. And he would now tell the cameraman, look, this is the shot I want. I want my feet while I'm walking. And then the cameraman would not know how to do it. And he'd say, give me the camera. Okay, put this lens. Oh. And he would film himself, yeah. you know. And because there's also, it's very tricky to do makeup for a black and white movie. Uh, it's very easy to do makeup for yeah, a color, color movie because it's more straightforward because black and white uh, if you do take a black and white movie scene and if you see the actors or the actresses coming out you'll look you'll think they're ghosts because it's so precise and more enhanced because only two colors are going to give you that look so it was way much more harder than what it is today and it was uh, done in all the shading was done in red mm. for black and white yeah. movies so yeah so like that uh, there were I mean, there are lots of his movies that we can talk about um, and his direction uh, because with every single movie he's made that were more uh, into real life or, you know, characters that you would, you can take out from uh, our day to day lives. Uh, you would sit and think it's, you know, someone you know because mm. he would bring it in with such reality. Um, and these are all films that, I mean, it's, it, he, him in movies is like an acting school. If you want to learn acting, watch his movies. Watch his <laughs> movies. Yeah. You know, it's simple as that. Uh, Chandan, what's the most fond memory you have of him? Well, when I go to his house, first of all, he starts talking to me in Tamil. <laughs> and I, I don't know Tamil. <laughs> although you are a Ratham. <laughs> although I'm a Tamil. <laughs> and then he says, You should be ashamed. He gives me a good reading down. <laughs> And then when he yeah. start talking, I said, yeah, I said, konjam, konjam, tere, yeah. you know, yeah. he, he's so fluent in yeah. Tamil. And I did that film, Sarungale, I, uh, my goodness, my. how he de depicted that Tamil man, the lead. It's amazing. That, huh? Amazing. Uh, amazing. That's a classical acting. Yeah. Mannerisms of a Tamil yeah. man the, in, in that dress, you know, it's amazing. And but you know, uh, sitting with him, having dinner with him is a treat. Mm. First of all, you do not only for the food, but also for the company. Uh, not only for the food, mm. <coughs> and he will not let you go. If he, he likes, not. It, he has a few friends. Mm. Let me tell you, he hasn't got many friends who is he, whom he considers friends. Mm. I know this for sure. He has a few guys. Now nowadays, everybody says, "Yeah, I was his friend. I was his <laughs> best friend." All. You know, <laughs> but but he has he picked his friends and he was good to his friends. He loved his friends and he treated them uh, in a very classical manner. After drinks, you go for dinner. After that, he says, "Now you don't have to go. You can stay here." No, no, we have to go. <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> and then as he leave, as we leave, if there's a young lady, he'll pick some flowers. Flowers. And, and, and he'll give the flowers and to he'll the give that. Oh, yeah. It was it was a lot of fun, and I love the way he smokes a cigarette. And a lot of lot of things I love about the guy. You know. I mean, he was an individual, he has a unique personality. Mm. And I have not seen anybody like that in Sri Lanka, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, great <coughs> stories to talk about a great person. Um, we, we wanted to have more and more people to bring out some great memories with him. Uh, but I think when years to come, we'll have more stories to share Absolutely. and more people coming forward. Uh, Chandran, thank you so very much. You know, I called Chandran. Uh, he was busy at that time. He was even on a set um, when I called you. And he said, yes. <laughs> There's always a nice way that Chandan always talks. He said, yes, ah, uh, my Danuk. <laughs> he said, of course, if it's for Garmini, I'm there. He didn't ask me time, where, when, what, even if I've told him, he said, no, I'll be there. And that's, that's what you call a friendship even after 16 years, to have him as special as he was to him every single day. And that's remarkable. Thank you so very much for your time. And, um, and Nihara for saying, I'll make sure I send him here. <laughs> She's like, I'll kick him out of the house sometime. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs>
<laughs> she is definitely a treat. Sangeeta, thank you so very much. Uh, it's great to know that uh, I think you are one of those lucky ones who got a chance to work with him. True. And um, anyway, it was lovely talking to you as well. Okay. Uh, if you have any memories that you would like to share, you could always leave a comment at the bottom. It will be much appreciated. Uh, thank you so very much for everyone who tuned in to Date with Danu today. Until we see you again, keep smiling. It's a wrap.